ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the hfcl limited q4 fy24 earnings conference call hosted by icici securities before we begin i would also like to read the disclaimer statement statement made during this call may be forward looking in nature based on management's current beliefs and expectations they must be viewed in relation to the risk that hfc hfcs business faces that could cause its future results performance or achievements to differ significantly from what is expressed or implied by such forward looking statements investors are therefore requested to check the information independently before making any investments or other decisions as a reminder all participants lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded and i'll hand the conference over to mr mohit lohia from icici securities thank you and over to you sir yeah hi good evening everyone thank you neha uh, uh, thank you for joining us today for quarter four of 24 earnings call of hfcl limited first of all i would like to thank management for giving us opportunity to host the call from the management side we have mr mahendra nahata chairman and managing director mr v r jain chief financial officer mr manoj beth company secretary and mr amit agarwal head investor relations so without further delay i would now like to hand over call to mr mahendra nahata for opening remarks thank you and over to you sir uh, thank you so much mohit and thanks everybody for joining our call the time is very valuable and i am thankful that you all could join our quarterly call for quarter 4 of financial year 24 2024 as scheduled i am delighted to welcome you all to hcl this any call for the fourth quarter for the year ended financial year 2024 i trust that you got a chance to go through our financial results press release and investor presentation which are available on the website of the company and also on the website of stock exchange so friends it is a matter of great satisfaction that despite the tough global macro environment indian economy is having robust growth and india is poised to become the third largest economy by 2027 as per imf surpassing japan and germany during the interim budget of 2024 the union finance minister underscored the forthcoming 5 years as a period poised for unparalleled development aligning with vision of vikshit bharat at 2047 she highlighted that technology alongside the telecom sector will play a pivotal role in india's transformative journey the indian telecom sector is undergoing a transformative change and will continue to on its expansion trajectory Fueled by liberal government policies, proactive government initiatives focused on national priorities, including Bharat Net Phase Two program and PLI schemes. Government initiative of promoting semiconductor manufacturing in India will also fuel long-term growth of the telecom sector. Hyper-scaling of data centers, increased smartphone usage, strong customer demand for high-speed internet connectivity, and 5G network expansion. in further fuel growth of the telecom sector the economic impact of 5g in india gdp could reach up to us dollar 450 billion by 2040 according to dilaw technologies media and telecommunications prediction report 2023 financial year 24 has been the proven to be pivotal year for hfcf our strategic investments in research and development have yielded significant returns resulting in the introduction of a comprehensive range of 5g connectivity solutions and products tailored specifically for telcos and enterprises both in india and across global markets led by innovation in financial year 2024 excel successfully launched the first made in india 5g fixed wireless access customer premises equipment portfolio then 1 gbps unlicensed and radio also ip mpls routers and introduce you know 1728 high fiber intermittently bonded ribbon cables 
और फाइव जी सिक्स वायरलेस एक्सेस इक्विपमेंट के मार्केट लीडिंग परफॉर्मेंस इन डिलीवरिंग हायर सपोर्ट वे इंट्रोड्यूस हॉटेबिलिटी फीचर्स इन आवर राउटर्स मेकिंग दम रेगेड फॉर यूज इन रूरल एरिया इन प्रोजेक्ट फाइल भारत में ऑन ओवरऑल आई व्यू द रिजल्ट ऑफ आवर आर एन डी टीम हैज अचीव इज अ माइल स्टोन शोइंग यूर टैलेंट एंड कैपेबिलिटी टू डिलीवर लेटेस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोडक्ट्स वी बिलीव डिमांड फॉर फाइव जी सिक्स वायरलेस एक्सेस कस्टमर कमसी इक्विपमेंट इज एट एन इंफ्लेक्शन पॉइंट एंड हैज बिकम एन इंपॉर्टेंट यूज स्पेस फॉर फाइव जी मॉनिटाइजेशन both in india and globally with 5g network rollout continuing the stream one monetization has been a key focus area for operators industry reports indicate fwa connections worldwide are projected to reach to 350 million by the end of 2029 as the transition to 5g continues and newer technological standards gain traction Telcos are projected to invest US dollars 342 billion in their networks in 2027 alone, as per PwC report. Every country has different types of specifications for fixed wireless access, customer premises equipment. Our company has been able to develop different variants and types of this equipment, and is uniquely positioned to manufacture and supply both for India and international markets. HFCL has already received orders for six lakh units of this equipment. One of the landmark success story of HFCL's R&D efforts has been design and manufacture of point-to-point -point analysis band radios. We have achieved record market share for this product in India. More than five lakhs of these radios have already been supplied by HFCL and are working to the full satisfaction of telecom operators for network backhaul and enterprise connectivity. HFCL is not only the largest supplier of these radios in India, but also can be counted among the leading suppliers around the globe. We are continuously receiving strong feedback from our customers for its low power consumption and zero spectrum cost. It is also worthwhile to mention that through its R&D and collaborative efforts, HFCL has created full solution of enterprise networking products. These products include Wi-Fi access points, routers, switches, backhaul radios, and network management system. Having established its name in telecom service wireless market, HFCL with its enterprise product range is now aggressively moving into enterprise market of telecom network products. Distributors and channel partners are being appointed throughout the country to reach to wide spectrum of enterprise customers, both in government and private sector. Opening up this new customer segment will provide a higher sustainable opportunity to our revenue. With introduction of new products and markets, our revenue from telecom equipment segment is expected to rise substantially. We expect that the revenue from this segment during financial year 25 will reach to approximately rupees 2,000 crores, from rupees 150 crores only in the year financial year 24. Driving growth through innovation is fundament, fundamental trend in digital economy. These trends are bringing very large opportunities for innovation and growth, not only for HFCL but for the entire ecosystem. Similarly, the optical fiber cable market remains a significant opportunity both in India and globally, driven by high-speed internet penetration, 5G network expansion, growth in data centers, Bharat Net Phase Three. Demand for fiber to home and global opportunity in key markets coupled by policies. Development and manufacture of 1,728 fiber-based optical fiber cable will open new market opportunities for sale to hyperscale data centers. In alignment with our strategy of expanding capacities and geographical access, HFCL has announced the setting up of an optical fiber cable manufacturing plant in Poland to address the increasing optical fiber. Stable demand in European markets. Mirroring the trends in the Indian optical fiber cable market, the European countries are also on a significant digitization drive as national priority. Committed to meet this growing demand and contribute contribute to Europe's digital future, HFCL has committed an initial investment up to Euro 
15.9 million, that is rupees 144 crores, for all in optical fiber cable manufacturing plant, with an initial annual capacity of 3.25 million fiber kilometers, which is further scalable to 7 million fiber kilometers per annum capacity. Our fiber and fiber optic cable manufacturing facilities in India are producing world class cable and fiber. Our fiber manufacturing plant has set new standards of productivity. One of the most anticipated opportunities on the horizon is the government's ambitious Bharat Net project, under which BSNL has already sorted approximately 60,000 crore tender for capex to be incurred in the next three years, followed by additional ONM opportunity worth 40,000 crores over a period of 10 years. BSNL Bharat Net project tender presents a huge opportunity to XFCL as it will strengthen the demand for optical fiber cables, telecom networking products, system integration services, and NVT revenue through ONML, ONM, all of which are in alignment with HFCL's core strength. HFCL is uniquely positioned to offer end-to-end -end solutions that meet Bharat Net's stringent requirements. We foresee good prospects for us, given our vertically, and horizontal integrated manufacturing capabilities in optical fiber cable, its accessories, telecom equipment, and SMPS to one of our good companies, coupled with vast experience of laying more than 2 lakh kilometers of optical fiber cable for various telecom operators. We are optimistically looking forward to securing a substantial pie of these opportunities. Export of products is going to be our cornerstone for increasing revenue. HFCL is already exporting its manufactured fiber optic cable to more than 40 countries with its own design network connectivity solutions, including 5G networking solutions. HFCL is now poised to start export of these products to a number of countries. Capability to customize the products to customer's requirement and also low cost base provides positive outlook for HFCL. With the release of every new version of software tuned to customer's requirement, we improve our product performance. I think these opportunities are just the tip of iceberg, and there are far more opportunities to come. We are confident of durability of demand drivers of industry and our own capability to take the advantage of sales for increasing our sales and market share. Driven by version given a vision to fortify national security and contribute to India's defense sector. HFCL envisions significant opportunity for itself in defense sector with innovation and tie with leading international companies. India accounts for 3.7% of global military spending, making it the third largest military spender in the world after US and China. This presents a significant market opportunity to HFCL. In alignment with government's Make in India policy, HFCL has already developed defense products like electronic switches, high capacity radio relay, and thermal weapon sites, all of which have good demand in Indian and international market. HFCL, at its 90% owned subsidiary Redux, has developed state of the art ground surveillance radars, which is an important component of modern surveillance systems. This radar designed by Redis is vast improvement in technology over the current generation of radars being used in India. Our ongoing R&D initiatives extend a diverse range of radar technology, including development of drone detection radars, Doppler weather radars, LTE-based passive radars, fog and foliage penetration radars, coastal surveillance radars, and avalanche detection radars. We have also successfully cleared a user trial readiness review for BMP-2 armament upgrade project of the Indian Army, further demonstrating our commitment to meeting the defense sector's requirements. This will lead to more opportunities and prospects for this HFC in the defense sector. We are also exploring opportunities for development of more products in the defense sector, and we are confident that we will be able to further grow and contribute to India's defense sector with our own development and new alliances. I am of strong belief 
But in the current year, we will have good growth in different sectors and it will achieve its escape velocity. During FY24, the company added an incremental order book of Rs. 3,725 crores, comprising products worth, orders worth more than 1,500 crores and system integration worth, orders worth 2,225 crores. Our product business has secured a purchase order of Rs. 623 crores for the supply of indigenously manufactured 5G networking equipment. This is the first such order for 5G networking equipment based on any Indian company by any telecom service provider. This strategic room is a testimony of a vision of designing and manufacturing high technology telecom equipment in India. HFCL has been building Investing in building portfolio of 5G networking equipment, which transforms telco's access and transport and last mile networking requirements. HFCL also secured a purchase order worth 141 crores from BSNL to supply indigenously designed and developed unlicensed band radios in 5 gigahertz frequency band and 1 Gbps capacity. This landmark deal aims to build their 4G network infrastructure ensuring cost of agency by minimizing equipment expenses and eliminating hefty spectrum usage charges. This significant week will solidify HSQL position as leader in indigenous 4G and 5G backhauling solutions. System integration order book comes from prestigious order valued at 1127 crores from Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited to transform the optical transport network infrastructure across BSNL's pan-India network and position the telco for the future in anticipation of 5G services. HFCL also secured 1,500 crore orders from Madhya Pradesh Jal Nigam, which encompassed system integration services, including provisions for laying of optical fiber cable on critical and important routes. Further, having added strong record in deploying communication network for various railway projects, Globally and domestically, HFCL also secured orders worth 80.90 crores from Delhi Metro Rail Corporation. These substantial wins underscore HFCL's sustained momentum and solidifies its position as a trailblazer in advanced communication technology solution. Our order book now stands at between 7,685 crores as of 31st March 2024 as compared to Rs. 7,010 crores last year. I must tell you that behind these numbers is relentless effort and work done by the entire team for development of new features and product innovation. We are very structured in our approach to business. The product and sales teams are working closely than ever. We remain incredibly focused on sales and growth of our market share. Further, STL Limited, one of our subsidiary companies, has successfully secured various prestigious orders in its wire harness business during financial year 2024 with its focus on automotive, aerospace, and different sectors. As you may be aware, that this segment is of low capex and high revenue generating segment. We strongly believe that this wire harness business can grow manifold in the years to come. Given that HFCL had received an approval to avail incentive participation in production linked incentive scheme, the company will start receiving PLI benefits in the current fiscal year on production of telecom and networking products. Friends, let me now brief you on the key performance metrics of the quarter four and the whole year. So the 12 months ended 31st March 2024. The company reported consolidated revenue of 4,465 crores as against 4,743 crores in financial year 2023. EBITDA of rupees 682 crores as against 666 crores in FI 2023. Profit before tax of 454 crores as against 431 crores in FI 23 and profit after tax of 338 crores as against 318 crores in FI23. Revenue of quarter 4 FI24 stood at 
1,326 crores as compared to 1,032 crores in quarter 3 of FI24 and rupees 1,433 crores in quarter 4 of FI23. EBITDA for quarter is 209 crores as compared to 163 crores in quarter 3 of FI24 and 160 crores in quarter 3 of FI23. EBITDA margins stand at 15.78% for quarter 4 in FI24 as compared to 15.83% in quarter 3 of FI24 and 11.74% in quarter 4 of FI23. Profit below tax for quarter 4 of FI24 stood at these 149 crores as compared to 108 crores of quarter 3 of FI24 and 109 crores of quarter 4 of FI23. Tight margin stands at 11.2% in quarter 4 as compared to 10.45% in quarter 3 of FI24 and 7.6% in quarter 4 of FI23. For quarter 4 of FI24, profit after tax stands 109 crores as compared to rupees 82 crores in quarter 3 of FI24 and 79 crores in quarter 4 of FI23. Tight margin stands at 8.25% in quarter 4 of FI24 as compared to 7.99% in quarter 3 of FI24 and 5.49% in quarter 4 of FI23. Segment revenue for telecom products during the quarter is stood at rupees 362 crores, that is 27.33% of quarter 4 revenue as compared to 364 crores, that is 35.24% or of FI23 revenue. FI23-24 has witnessed slight decline in year-to-year -year revenue due to softening in demand of optical fiber cables. This temporary decline is in line with the worldwide trend. It is attributed to inventory built up with major operators resulting in an overall reduction in revenue in absolute terms. Our growth is driven by three independent drivers, which all are working together. These are robust investment in research and development, backward integration with capacity expansion, and expanding national and international business. With these growth engines, we have been able to significantly improve our revenue mix, product mix, geographical presence, and customer mix, ensuring sustainable growth in times to come. We remain confident of opportunities ahead and execution of our long-term strategy. We are confident that OFC demand will be restored in quarter two of financial year 25 onwards in both India and key global markets. Furthermore, we are confident our continued effort in designing and developing innovative and geography specific optical fiber cables for international markets, along with the introduction of new 5G telecom networking equipment and defense products, will further aid results in coming quarters. These efforts are expected to provide impetus to both revenue growth and profitability, along with the potential of increasing our margin. Our outlook is very bright and we look forward to a very strong year ahead. Friends, thank you once again for your team participation. With this, I conclude my opening remarks and open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking the questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Parth Mehta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, this time we have uh, uh, executed services, turnkey services worth some 990 crores. So I wanted to, you to shed some light on that as in uh, we have done better on services margins front as compared to products. And uh, is it 
the way forward or are we going to uh, is this is a one of kind look you know uh, yes we have executed 964 crores of uh, services in the current quarter and margins have also been good uh, you know these margins i cannot give you a definitive answer that this is a trend would continue or there will be recession because you know uh, it is all depends upon contract to contract sometimes contracts are they are which are of high margin high profitability sometimes they are of uh, uh, you know lower margin and lower profitability so there cannot be any definitive answer to this but yes we look for reasonable margins to continue in our contracts and we are not taking contracts which are with a lower margin okay so uh, is this uh, uh, anything to do with the orders that we have got uh, from bsnl worth 1100 odd crores uh, is it execution from on that front or no no no, no. execution of that order would be in the current year that execution has not even started significantly okay that would start in this quarter june quarter or uh, it will take some more time no no this starting the current quarter in the june quarter okay and uh, uh, the mix of products and services would remain 70 30 going forward whenever as and when the optic fiber cycle turns no i think you know this year there would be a very transformative change uh, okay. one of the important factors which is going to happen as i said in my opening remarks yeah. last year uh, the revenue from telecom products are only about 150 crores So okay. this year we are expecting revenue of 2,000 crores from the telecom products. So 150 crores which is for 2,000. Is that 2,000 crore X O F C or uh... no, without O F C? That's why we use the word telecom products. Now, okay. now O F C also we are expecting revival of market this year globally and India also. Yeah. More so globally, and we expect a revenue again more than 2,000 crores. Uh, in the current financial year from optical fiber cable business okay. so uh, there is a potential of product business reaching to 4000 crore plus in the current financial year this okay. would mean that uh, you know uh, this uh, our uh, revenue would consist of more than two third of the product given and less than one third of uh, project given and this trend is expected to continue in future if you recall that i have been always been saying that our effort is always to develop the product business now the is the project business last year was an aberration because of low demand of fiber optic cable and new products had all not been you know uh, sent to market they were undergoing test trials and all that with a new telecom products which have been designed by us already in the market now and also fiber optic cable demand picking up and both these segments giving a revenue of possible revenue of 2000 crore each in the current year this okay. is really a very very tough formative change you know with almost 70% almost 70% of revenue coming from product business which is cable and the telecom products but important point is first time we would have such a high revenue coming from telecom products okay so my last question is uh, uh, have we executed anything from madhya pradesh jal nigam order that we had received a uh, very small portion probably about 50 crores to so around less than little less than 50 crores okay okay and the bsnl order that we have 1100 crore order that is mix of products and services right yes it's a mix of products and services Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bala Subramaniam from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, thank you so much for taking my questions. Sir, my first question regarding like we have seen a uh, uh, lot of uh, strong tower, tower additions by one of tower infra players, so majorly led by rural expansion and uh, 5G rollout. and uh, so what kind of demand and uh, business opportunities we have uh, in this uh, tower rollout and uh, apni share uh, uh, like what, what kind of business share we have from telecom players like uh, jio airtel vodafone and bsnl so the tower rollout uh, companies you know like in the sorry these companies do not represent any major demand opportunity for us 
because tower is more you know uh, construction of towers which we don't do so much and also not so much of fiber optic cable and all that so that does not represent any great demand opportunity for us, a tower per se but when you ask about telcos you know who are themselves building towers like jio for example they are building the demand opportunity for us because they connect to all their towers by fiber optic cable or wireless both these areas we are present and we supply equipment to telecom operators whether it is fiber optic cable or whether it is backhaul radios they are really in the demand opportunity comes from us because the typically tower operators do not provide transmission neither fiber nor uh, wireless they just provide a tower and the equipment are fitted by the operators so our segment is the telco not the tower operators so if there is a increasing towers by telcos there is strong demand opportunity for us and we will be continue to receive such orders okay sir so on the press release like we have mentioned uh, inventory built up will clear uh, from qtfi 25 onwards so what is the uh, triggers are there to clear those inventories on operator levels especially you can uh, share uh, what kind of environment in europe us and china and other markets So, you know, and when you know, inventory would get cleared up with this increase in uh, demand of fiber optic cables, with this in demand increasing, this inventory will automatically get cleared up. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, sir, on the price levels uh, for hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Balasubramanian. Sir, on the price. Uh, Price levels of optical fibers and optical fiber cables. Earlier, we have mentioned in the calls around uh, uh, optical fibers around 250 uh, 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 rupees per fiber kilometer and uh, OFC size. No, no, no. 250 rupees was the fiber, not cable. Yes, sir. Fibers and the OFC is around 950 levels. So, what is the price range right now? Yeah. Have you seen any improvement? Yeah, this uh, fiber price remains around the same 250 to 60 rupees per kilometer. Almost, you know, I, you can you know say that two fifty to two seventy five, depending upon who is the manufacturer and how good is quality and all that. And uh, fiber, as far as this is concerned, uh, uh, cable is concerned, it is around this thousand rupees, you know, around thousand rupees. Some will have a little bit more, some would have a little bit less. Yes, but it is around thousand rupees per cable, uh, fiber kilometer of cable. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, and that. Uh, Poland's plan. Uh, I have mentioned it's around 15.9 million. Uh, it's a euro or dollar terms. Euro, 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 euro terms. Okay, sir. So in case uh, 3.2 million uh, uh, fiber kilometer uh, capacity, what kind of uh, 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 peak revenue potential in those plans? About 350 crores. 350 crores. Okay, sir. And this uh, scaling up up to 7.5 million capacity at that level. When is expected, sir? Is 3.2 million and 7.5 million the any timeline? Uh, I could not understand your question. Be a little clear when you speak. No, sir. Like uh, execution uh, timeline uh, for those uh, capacity completion. Yeah, so 3.25 million capacity. We are targeting to start manufacturing from uh, April of uh, next financial year. Okay, sir. So and uh, the overall, the, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, when we can expect uh, this large, large order inflows from uh, new telecom products and uh, different side. And uh, oh, we, have, uh, we already have significant order book for our new uh, product, uh, telecom equipment products. Uh, of the 2,000 crores revenue, I am expecting we have more than 1,500 crores worth of order already in our hands. More than that, about 1,700 crore. So expectation of 2,000 crore of uh, uh, revenue uh, from uh, this telecom equipment product is not a problem at all. In, in fact, we may be much higher than 2,000 crore, which I am not projecting. But you know, when you have 1,700 crore worth of order in hand, the whole year is there. 11 months of the year, you are still left. You can definitely expect more orders, which would be executed in the current year itself. So. Uh, there is already a robust order book, and I expect as we start supplying of some equipment like fixed wireless, uh, fixed equipment, as I mentioned, of 600 crore with this order, 
I expect more orders to come. And also, uh, export is a good potential for these equipment. They are also export reasonably good orders. So, order book is already there, you know, but we, we will, as we supply, we keep on getting more orders. Got it. Sir, uh, on that balance sheet, we have seen capital work in progress around 154 crore. And how much capex uh, we have spent in this financial year, and how much uh, uh, we are planning for FI 25 and 26? So we have already spent about 140 crores of capex in this financial year. And uh, total capex expected to be uh, this year and the next year, you know, two years now I'm talking about, is about 900 crores. Okay, got it, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Then, uh, last question. Uh, uh, any plans to enter in internet? Thank you, sir. I request you to come back for a follow-up question. Yes, thank you, madam. Uh, the next question is from the line of Hima Shujain from Tiger Assets. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Am I, am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible, Mr. Manshi, perfectly audible. Uh, congratulations on great set of numbers, sir. My, I have two questions. Yeah. One, uh, what is the expected order book completion timeline? And the second one being, uh, what is the expected uh, rollout time according to you for 100% 5G rollout in India? You know, expected timeline of orders, you know, different in different orders. You know, there are so many orders. It's not one order. So, for example, this... Uh, uh, order of fixed wireless access, we expect about five months timeline to complete that. About five months now. This can be six, this can be four. Uh, for a uh, uh, BSN order for 1100 course, we take at least eight to nine months time for completion. Uh, so then orders for uh, this uh, 20 contracts, we expect about a year to complete. So. You know, different timelines are there for different orders. The BSM order for UBR, we expect a timeline of three to four months to complete. So this is extend from three months to 12 months, you know, different orders and different timelines. And uh, uh, your second question was, uh, when would the 5G network deployment will, deployment will get completed? You know, I'm not sure this is, network deployment never gets completed. It always continues, you know. As the subscriber increases, more number of towers are required, more number of base stations are required, more connectivity solutions are required. So this keeps on going on. And while this is going on, there is a change in technology. Like 4G happened, then 5G has happened. Earlier 3G was there, 4G came. 4G, after that 5G has come. 5G is there, now 6G will come. So this will ever continue. This is not going to change at all. Okay. And, and this is good for us, you know. Imagine there was nothing after 4G. There is only 4G. Then the demand would be much less, you know. There would be no demand of new equipment, new technology, new equipment. So 5G has come. There is all of a sudden increase in demand of equipment. There is increase in demand of services. 6G will come. It will further increase the demand and demand for equipment and services both. So this cycle will keep on continuing forever. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it from my side. And it looks for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from the line of Siddhant Singh from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Siddhant? No, yeah, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, Mr. Siddhant, you are very audible. Yeah. So, my first question is regarding your defense product. So, uh, could you provide an update on the current status of the different products that are under development and what uh, we can anticipate about uh, uh, contributing them as a top line of our business? Uh, Sitan, let me answer your first question. Um, products, you know, we have uh, electronic widgets which are now completely ready. Uh, we have uh, already produced. Uh, 200 fuses for trial testing in Army's firing ranges. We have already deposited almost 2 crores to buy ammunition for trial. And we are asked for firing range. You know, it needs to be fired with the force guns and similar kind of guns. 
So you need a firing range of 30, 40, 50 kilometers without habitation. So we expect that to be given to us uh, sometime uh, either end of this month or the next month. And the test firing will happen uh, by the Indian Army. And uh, we see very good potential for this product in India, but more than in India in export market. And I have not really budgeted anything in my projection for the next year or the current year, but still, though not budgeted in IOP, but I still see a very good future for this product for export even in the current financial year. You know, I have been, I, as people have come to know that we are going to produce fuses, I have already received, started receiving inquiries for lakhs of fuses, for lakhs of fuses. I am already receiving inquiries. So there is a huge demand potential for these fuses from export market, which would be running into hundreds of crores, hundreds of crores. I am already receiving inquiries, which I am not responding back right now, except this, you know, general discussion. So first I want my fuse to be tested and all approved, which is suddenly going to happen. But demand potential is very high, more outside India than in India, because of the global geopolitical environment which is happening, as you know very well. So I have a huge demand opportunity for fuses uh, in my hand, number one. Number two, uh, thermal weapon sites, which is, you know, uh, in a, you know, layman's word, night vision devices for the assault rifles, machine guns, and rocket launchers. We have participated in a number of tenders, which are undergoing a trial right now. When the trials are over, uh, then, of course, tenders will be opened, and we expect to receive some orders for that. Then we have uh, uh, radars high capacity radio relay. Radars, uh, as I said in my presentation, is developed by our subsidiary, 90% owned subsidiary Redis, located in Bangalore. Uh, those radars have been designed for various kind of applications. And there is ground service radar, for example. It's a real breakthrough in technology. Currently, the radars of similar kind being used are weighing 30 to 35 kgs. What we are designing with better features and better performance is weighing only 7 or 8 kgs. One man can lift and take it anywhere. So you can imagine the kind of technology innovation we have done. Now, the ground surveillance radars have got different variations also. Coastal surveillance radars. We are talking to many of the defense established firms for the supply of that. I cannot name them now, but we are talking. Uh, we have a uh, another radar coming up in next six months time or so, drone detection radar. You know how important uh, the drone warfare has come in, become in current uh, times. Whichever fight you see uh, happening, war happening anywhere in the world, drones are becoming an important method of attack. Now, therefore, detecting incoming drones is a major issue. So our drone detection radar is under development and is a, you know, final phase of, you know, software development, that will again have the ability to look into 10 kilometers and 100 objects can be detected simultaneously. So that is happening. Radio relay is another equipment, you know, which is required by Army, high capacity radio relay. Then for the defense, we have just installed new machines in our fiber optic cable manufacturing facility in our subsidiary STF which is going to be, these two machines are going to produce a special type of fiber optic cables required by defense forces. If even a tank rolls over that uh, cable, nothing happens to that cable. So that kind of a cable we will be manufacturing, which is called tactical fiber optic cable by use, for use by the army in the field. So these are some of the defense products I just mentioned. Apart from that, in a system integration business for defense services in defense uh, electronics, we have already gone through user trial readiness review by Army for upgradation of uh, armored personal carriers BMP2, and we are completely successful in that. Now tender would come, we will participate, trials will happen, then only we will see the face of the order if we win. But yes, these are the opportunities ahead of us, and as I said, as much as the opportunities in Indian market, India being the third largest center of defense, 
with about 90 billion dollars of spending every year. You know, uh, there are huge opportunities in the export market also. So I look forward to defense business quite optimistically, but we have, I have not projected any revenue from that in the current year, but I certainly hope we will get revenue in the current year, it may not be very big because uh, this uh, trials and all these things are going to happen. But next year onwards, I expect different revenue to reach to higher three-digit numbers. Okay, okay, sir. And sir, do we have a confirmation for ammunition fuses uh, 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 for their uh, delivery in, in next month? Sorry. No, no, I didn't say next month. I said trial in next month, not delivery. Okay, okay, okay. Trial, okay. they are ready. They are ready. Okay, okay, sir. And what is the average? Can you give me the average price of a fuse per, per fuse? They are very difficult. You know, there are nine different kind of fuses, nine different kind of prices, you know. There is no single price. And prices also vary market to market. In India, it is something. In export, it is something else. So, but in a general, I can say they are from 5,000 rupees to 20,000 rupees. Okay. And but my last question is that he, you have any plan or Sorry to interrupt you, sir. I request you to come back for follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address the questions from all participants, please limit your questions to two per participants. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Agarwal from Manior. Please go ahead. Hello? Yeah, Mr. Rajesh, please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, uh, when will the substantial part of telecom products, uh, new products, uh, will come into revenue? Oh, this will start from this quarter, but from quarter two onwards, it will be substantial part coming up. Okay. It will be out of five for the new products. No, no, it, as I said little earlier, it is going to be equally divided in optical fiber and the equipment both. You know, it is going to be, our estimation is that it will be 2,000 crores from optical fiber cable or little more than 2,000 crores and similarly 2,000 crores from equipment. This is going to be very, very transformative this year, Rajesh. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, first time we'll have a four-digit number on equipment okay. uh, business of, uh, okay. you know, uh, in the company. And the combined margins or combined margin will be around 18 to 19 percent? No. No, not. We are talking about net margin, gross margin. No, no, or... EBITDA, EBITDA margins. EBITDA margin would be something like, uh, I would say, 15 percent or so. 15 to 17 percent, depending upon order to order situation to situation. And there will be a contribution from 20 projects also, uh, what we did in this quarter. Thank you. Uh, what was your question? Uh, so, uh, this quarter there is a substantial uh, revenue from Trunky projects. So going forward also the uh, Trunky projects also will contribute? Yeah, well, current year we are looking at Trunky projects of about, you know, 1250 plus 500. Okay. About 1750 to 2000 crores. 2000. So the combined revenue for 24-25 may be 5 to 6000 crores? You know, I would not do any forward guessing, but at least I can tell you we can expect okay. 2,000 crores from equipment business, okay. about same from uh, fiber optic cable business, and again same from uh, turnkey. You know, within that, order for 1,700 crores are already in my hand for uh, equipment business. Okay. Cable always keep on being received in small sums, you know, it never comes in 1,000 crores or 1,200 crores or something like that. Oh. But with the revival of market, 2,000 crores plus seems to be quite certain. Okay. And okay. on the turnkey side, wait a minute, on the turnkey business, we already have orders worth about 1,200 crores in hand. Okay. And there is a regular business of one of our customers, which is from last 10 years, it is coming 500 crores every year. That should continue. So that 2,000 crores is more or less assured. So, if you count all these three, two, 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 you can guess the number yourself. So, what is the reason we are so, you are so bullish on the optical side, but the traction has not been coming for last one or two years? Look, I tell you, no, not one or two years, only one year. Last year was, last year, last year was very good. Ah, okay. The revenue of 2400 crores. This year, what happened, 
you know, in anticipation that, you know, the demand would be very high, the operators and distributors had accumulated stocks. And okay. demand did not go up that high for geopolitical reasons, overall okay. effects and all that. As a result of that, operators as well as distributors had a lot of stock with them. Okay. So, that reduced the demand in the current year with a lower consumption and stock in hand, it reduced the demand. Now, that traction has started coming back again in the U.S. Okay. Okay. Demand has already increased. If you have seen a statement by Corning pretty recently, two, three days ago, okay. they are also okay. seeing the same thing. And we are also looking at the same thing in the global market. And in India, demand would be very substantially increased, which is Bharat Net, which is going to be announced in next one or two weeks. You know, tender is already there, clarification is to be given. And I think another month or 40 days that day time, tender has to be submitted. So that would be huge demand opportunity in terms of uh, fiber optic cable for Indian companies. So I, I was reading a recently uh, article by uh, the telecom minister. He, he was saying that there are a lot of companies uh, because uh, we, don't, we don't want to import uh, telecom equipments. So a lot of companies which have come under the PILI scheme will buy from them. So when I understood Tejas, uh, whether the products are same or not, they have got a lot of patented products. And if you see this quarterly, how Tejas is completely turned around. They have backed a lot of orders. So same thing can happen with Tejas, us also? Banked order. Tejas is Tata company. And the major order is from uh, BSNL for uh, ah. this, uh, okay. uh, from, uh, you know, uh, this uh, 4G networking equipment. It is good. Okay. They have done good. Okay. And we have also got good orders, as I said, you know. Okay. It's a reasonably good opportunity for all of us. And it's a minister's statement, it's right. And that is good for Indian companies. That Indian is companies, are right. From India on, it's good for Indian companies like us. Indian. So how is the bidding pipeline? The bidding pipeline is good. You know, with Bharatnet itself would be 50,000 crores. Okay. So that tender already is open? No. That is to be submitted, I believe, in about 45 days time. Then it will get open. And uh, finalization of that is expected in some time in August. Okay. So uh, can we see the R&D facilities? No. Can huh? we visit? Uh, can we visit the R&D facilities? Yeah, it is in Bangalore. You can certainly visit with a prior appointment. Oh. Okay, sir. And so this time the presentation was very good. It was short yeah, and very crisp. Visit our oh. factory. You know, just go and see the Hyderabad factory. Oh. Okay. We could use fiber and cable both with a prior oh. appointment. You can be most welcome to visit that also. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshil Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question, sir. Hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're audible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so thank you so much. A lot of my questions have been answered. But I just wanted to ask something about our CAPEX and our debt. So currently we are expecting 900 crores CAPEX in the next two years. So what will be our debt level? How are we planning to fund it currently? So could you just give some color on that? Uh, my CFO, Mr. Uh, Jain, will answer that. The CAPEX plan is around 900 crores during this financial year and part will uh, go to the next financial year. And this entire capex will be funded by internal approval and some equity raise which we have already done and the money is lying with us and part to that. So that equity ratio which is currently 0.24, it will remain in the same range, I mean 0.242, maybe 0 0.27, 0 0.37, at max it will be 0 0.30, not more than that. Okay, okay, fair to say. So, sir, after the so, when can we, you know, maybe see debt reduction because interest cost is also a substantial. Our debt is already cost. very low. You know, point two eight is no with debt itself. You know, so majorly it is working capital debt which is required for various project execution and all that, and the uh, most part of that is uh, in the form of LCs and bank guarantees. So oh. the interest cost that uh, the, the, the finance charge includes the Charges of BGs and LCs as well. It is okay. not entirely the interest cost. Okay, okay, okay. So fair enough, sir. Uh, so just, uh, so most, again, thank you so much, sir. Most of my questions have been already answered. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address the question from all participants, 
please limit your questions to two per participant okay. the next question is from the line of sanjeev dhamani from skd consulting please go ahead namaskar sir am i audible yes yes thank you sir uh, sir uh, thanks for the opportunity my uh, my two questions are one is regarding our uh, uh, debtor that is 2200 crore so almost it is uh, coming to 50% of our sale so if we are going for 7000 uh, uh, crore uh, sales then will our outstanding be and debtor will be as high as 50% and no no no, no 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 i tell you why so debtor sir more when you do 10 to 3 and when you have heard me saying that you know next year revenue we are forecasting 4000 crores coming from cable as and products which are uh, not having that large a uh, period for uh, you know recovery so they may be you know more like uh, 60 to 90 days 60 to 90 days maximum 90 days Okay. So it will not be in a, in a level what you are just saying. It will be much lower than that. Uh, and, and soon we will be recovering all this. Whatever is outstanding, will we be getting it cleared by this quarter end? Uh, say that again. I missed your question. Uh, will will we be able to realize uh, uh, most of the money is by this quarter end of our uh, data? Quarter end, not this quarter end. Uh, you know, it, it will. Coming up in season, the major part is from NFS, Network for Spectrum Mutual Executive for Indian Army. So part of that would be about uh, you know uh, take uh, I would say more than a year or so after completion of the project, and rest of the debt we will keep on realizing as we go by in time. You know, some are 60 days, some are 90 days. Okay. So, okay. So, so something like that. a uh, second question is regarding my uh, making my understanding better about the fact that our ministers have said that we are introducing 6g also very soon and all this will be uh, will be and is being manufactured within india so can i take it this way that the himachal futuristic is the only supplier of all these uh, telecom exchanges and facilities of 5g and no, no 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 we are not the only supplier we are one of the supplier for telecom equipment So we are not the only supplier. Nobody can be only supplier. Number I mean, one. On a listed place, sir, only you are listed who are supplying all these equipment and exchanges and all these things. Sir. No, no, no. But supplier, Tejas is there. Who are supplying? We are there. There are number of companies who are there. Okay. Not only okay. us. Number one. But we are we are also equipped to completely supply the exchange and the facilities to. There is nothing called exchange these days. There is nothing called exchange these days. You know that time is gone. We okay. call core and access and that kind of a transport, that kind of a network. But we are supplying not the whole network, but the part of the network. We are more on the access side and the transmission side, not on the core side. Core is uh, we don't have core. No Indian company has core either. So we are having access and transmission. And uh, there are other companies also who are doing the same business, access and transmission. Okay. Uh, but at the same point of time, 6G to answer your 6G question, 6G developmental effort has started. Really, 6G to become commercial, it is at least four or five years away. Okay. Thank you very much for the understanding and time given, sir. Uh, and all the best. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. नमस्कार नाडा जी नमस्कार जय जी मैं आपको इंतजार नहीं कर रहा था आप कहाँ से सीधे सर मैं तो क्यों मैं कतार में ही खड़ा हूँ सर जब नंबर आएगा सर अभी तक सोच ही रहा था सागर जी कहाँ गए अभी तक नहीं सर मैं आ गया सर थैंक यू धन्यवाद सर सर व्हेन वी लुक एट द ऑर्डर बुक स्प्रिटअप वी फाइंड एज अ ब्रेकअप इन इन योर प्रेजेंटेशन फोर सेवन फाइव एट इज द नेटवर्क सर्विसेज एट इज द एट करोड़ इज द प्रोडक्ट एंड टू इज द ओ सो अंडर दिस नेटवर्क सर्विसेज uh there is a uh, combination of both trunky and the product yes you know, for example this 1100 crores of orders for dsnl for equipment has been clubbed into uh, that uh, you know what you are seeing 4700 crores it is more of product less of uh, services but it has been clubbed into that because it includes some part of services okay so the trunky order book the core trunky order book kitni hai sir hamari amazon core trunky order book uh, would be something like out of 7000 crores should be something like uh, 
अबाउट फोर थाउजेंड करोड अबाउट फोर थाउजेंड करोड प्लस समथिंग लाइक फोर थाउजेंड करोड प्लस दिन गेट यू सर सर आई एम आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट ओनली दी ट्रंकी प्रोजेक्ट ट्रंकी प्रोजेक्ट कैन इट कैन बी प्रोडक्ट या ओनली ट्रंकी पोर्शन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट दैट्स व्हाट यू आर सेइंग ना यस या सो दैट शुड बी सेम दैट इज 4000 करोड सो ट्रंकी पोर्शन इज सर्विसेज पोर्शन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट शुड बी अराउंड 4000 करोड या आई आई थिंक आई एम getting mistaken on that front but i take it off the line from jenta uh, on the onm part sir uh, hello ha huh. on the onm part 2037 crore wha, how will that will start accruing accruing the same and how much have you booked for this financial year it will take about 7 years mr sakit 7 years right and from the next year itself we will start or no. uh, when will this it start is, taking in then it sir It has started already. Some of it is already started. It will continue through this year also. Okay, uh, Janja, I have a question on this un- other intangible asset and intangible asset under development. If you could just explain to us uh, what are these two line items? Uh, there is a significant increase in, in- intangible asset under development from 200 crore to 315 crore, and other tangible assets have risen from 18 crore to 118 crore. So what are these? Uh, are these related to R and D? How are we going to benefit? This is a lot, a large sum of money. Sadhya ji, we are developing lot of products as part of telecom and defence. So whenever any product uh, is uh, is ready for launch or it has been launched, so that part of the uh, R and D spend is capitalised, and remaining uh, remaining is shown as intangible under development. So once it is commercialised and capitalised, then it is amortised over a period of five years. right 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 and lastly sir on this uh, the the successful ipo for vodafone sir uh, does does this give the impetus impetus to the entire ecosystem and a new capex cycle can be envisaged uh, going ahead that the confidence that the investing community has uh, in structure on uh, the vodafone okay. very good question and in fact i used it to talk about it in the my opening remarks Yes. it definitely gives a uh, very good impetus to uh, equipment manufacturers in india you have the new operator not a new operator old operator getting active now in the equipment business you know which was not active earlier because of the money issue and all that with ipo and today's news item that 18000 crores they are going to raise from banks which makes it almost 40000 crores of capex by them It is really good, you know. With that kind of a capex, new demand would be generated for fiber optic cable, equipment, and everything. And some share will be available to us also, of course. So it, we are really happy about it. With a revival of VI, as well as revival of DSL, and continued growth of Jio and Airtel. Right, right. And do you have any deals from them, sir? Well, no, no. They are very minor deals. Maybe some regular supplies we do, but there is no overdues. Right, and on closing, sir, Exicom issue was also uh, public issue was also grand success, and uh, SSCL holds a minority st- uh, a stake in Exicom. So, what's the roadmap ahead, and what are the synergies with uh, Exicom, uh, the other listed company for the the SSCL? There is no roadmap as far as investment is concerned. That that is there, but the, there is synergy definitely. Synergies they also produce apart from EV chargers, they produce. critical telecom power supply equipment so wherever we have customers uh, for critical power supply equipment uh, any turn key service or all that we can source certainly from icom and that would give us more competitive and more complete product range right thank thank you for all the uh, detailed answers sir jens a 120 crore income tax ha- uh, has been paid for this year so this does this uh, include for this year also or prior period also and what is our current tax rate No, no, no. Income tax is charged year on year. So part is the regular tax and part is shown as part of the deferred tax, current and deferred tax. It is segregated in two parts. Uh, sir, I am cash flow. I am telling you. Cash flow. Me, you have shown that one hundred and twenty crore payment. Cash flow. Me. In under cash flow, uh, income tax paid is mentioned as one hundred and twenty crore. One two zero. तो तो ये ये तो ये अपना जो टी डी एस टैक्स जो डिडक्ट होता है ना अच्छा सर वो दोनों मिला के रहेगा
Okay, got got the point. Thank you, thank you, Nata ji. This is one of the very transformative call uh, from you. from HFCSR, wherein you have we have infused a uh, lot of confidence uh, among you, the investing community in your remarks uh, in terms of this product uh, sales, then again OFC, then the Trunky project, and then the entire ecosystem getting charged up. So we hope for a transformation and exponential growth next year, uh, yeah. and 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 we hope uh, you know as a reality, sir. There are three things, you know, in revenue. One is equipment business becoming very robust. The 2,000 crore is expected and 1,700 crore orders are already there. 2,000 crore plus an optical fiber cable. And defense business, don't forget, though I have not put anything in the, uh, you know, estimated revenue, but defense business has a huge opportunity coming up uh, in a sense that, uh, you know, fuses, for example, there's so much of demand. If I start production today, I'll be booked for one year. That's the kind of demand coming up for fuses, you know. Even before I have tested, the demand of lots of fuses in front of me. So defense business has also got very high potential, including this then the uh, upgradation of BMP2. Again, a very huge potential. So defense business also is very huge potential, and that would be a very transformative change for HFCL apart from equipment business. Right. Thank, thank you for, uh, and we hope to, to see things on ground uh, improving drastically, dramatically rather. For thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kapoor. And this will be the last question, operator, I can take. Yeah. Yeah. Take. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And all the best to the team. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Mahindra Nahata for closing comments. Uh, well, you know, uh, gentlemen, uh, some of the questions would remain not answered, as I can see. So kindly send emails to us for your questions, and we will be very glad to answer to our investor relation officer, Mr. Amit Agarwal. We will be very glad to answer those questions. But as a concluding remark, I would say that we are looking forward to this current year with a lot of uh, optimism and a lot of uh, growth in our revenue uh, in equipment business. Uh, as I said, from 150 crore to 2,000 crores, which will give, coupled with fiber optic cable together, uh, the growth in product business itself will be substantial, reaching to roughly about 4,000 crores. That is what is the best expectation of the management is on the basis of order book and as well as uh, the kind of uh, orders we are expecting to receive in fiber optic cable. Moreover, uh, order for, um, uh, you know, 20 projects are also in hand for 1250 crores or so, and more orders, such orders are expected. So I, my expectation of uh, 2000 crores of order from that part of business is also quite uh, robust expectation, not based on estimation, but based on, uh, you know, realistic expectation. So we look forward to the current year uh, with a lot of... Uh, uh, robustness and expectation of uh, good revenue coming up and our R&D efforts are certainly going to throw in more number of products in defense as well as the uh, telecom sector. That would be, you know, uh, this kind of R&D and uh, development of products would be really an impetus for our long-term strategy for keeping on increasing revenue for through products and not so much from services. So we are very optimistic about growth with the growth of telecom sector, both in the different sector and, and the export also. We are very optimistic for the future. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.